Hi, I'm Sarah Delaney with One Big Happy Yarn Company, and today we are making earmuffs. I'm so excited about this project. I have been wanting to make these for like a decade. This is like a dream project for me, so I'm super excited to share this with you and see all the earmuffs that you're gonna make. I mean, look at these things. They're so great and squishy and comfy, and I love them so much. You're gonna love them too. Let's talk about what we're gonna need. Um, yarn, crochet hook, um, and some other accessories. And you're gonna need earmuff frames. This is three pieces. Now, if you pick up a kit at onebighappy.com or at the, dis uh, at the link in the description below, um, the kit comes with four colors of yarn and the earmuff frames, two earmuff frames, because each kit makes two pairs of earmuffs and your printed pattern with all the instructions. Um, if you just need the pattern or you just need the earmuff frames, you can head to onebighappy.com and you can pick those up separately. Um, I bet these would be great in a uh, stash sock yarn because we all have those little bits and pieces of sock yarn left over from other projects. And this is sock weight yarn that we're using. We are using the Uni Merino minis from Universal Yarns that come in well, I mean, so many solid colors that are great to mix and match together. So you can pick those up individually too if um, any of the, the uh, kit colorways that we have don't quite ring your bell. You can always put your own together. You will also need um, an E 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a slightly smaller crochet hook. You will need a tapestry needle. You will need stitch markers. And for crocheters, we want locking stitch markers, stitch markers that open and close because you're gonna need to put these stitch markers into your stitches. You're gonna need scissors. I like these little folding scissors. I do a lot of traveling and these are great going through TSA. Um, another couple of things that are not in your kit. Um, the earmuff frames, the headband is plastic. You could just keep it that way. Um, but aesthetically for me, I'm not super happy with just white plastic. So I just picked up some craft felt at the craft store and sort of measured it around the earmuff frames and then make sure it's twice as wide fold it over and then I just blanket stitched it. And they have like fantastic craft felt at the craft store now. I mean, look, I have shiny silver craft felt on this one. Um, so it's just a blanket stitch. It's not a hidden stitch. You could run it through on a sewing machine, but then I don't wanna have to flip this inside out. I think blanket stitch is just fine. So needle, thread, felt, cover your frame. But the most exciting part are the pieces that we make to cover our ears. Let's get started with that. So of your four colors, you're going to pick one. Um, when you've thought about the pattern that you want on the outside. So the kit comes with two patterns. So there's this fantastic swirly, and then we have sort of the granny squarey one. Um, and each of those is going to use all four of your colors. So you sort of need to think about what's going to be behind this because it's three layers. There are two layers here on the outside, and then there's one layer on the inside. Um, and we do two layers on the outside because, especially with this granny square one, you can really kind of see through the stitches, and you don't want to look through the stitches to see the white plastic. So it's, it's two layers. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, so there's one layer that is just around. We're going to make that one. And then there's your decorative layer that goes over that. You're gonna make that too. And then you're gonna make another round, but you're gonna hold two colors together. And that'll be sandwiched this way behind with the frame going in there. And then it gets stitched together all the way around. And I'll show you how we do all that. But these are the three pieces that we need to make for each ear cover. So, Let's get started with that. I'd ask if you have any questions, but you can't really ask me in person, but you could leave a question down below in the comments and I'm happy to answer that for you. So we're gonna start with a sliding ring or a magic ring, which is different than in knitting. So working with my tail to the right, I'm gonna wrap my yarn around these two fingers once, twice, and then 
tuck that tail in. I'm going to reach under these two strands, grab my working yarn and bring it up, and then I'm going to chain one. That locks these loops in place. And I'm going to chain two more for a total of three chains. And then this chain three counts as a stitch. And we're going to do 11 double crochets into this ring before we close it all up. Um, if you are super brand new to crochet, um, you, you can certainly work your way through this project. Just take your time with it. Or you can check out our Make Happy Beginner Crochet series. There's a link up above. Um, where I'll walk you through all of the basic stitches so that you get really comfortable with your crochet. Um, this is more of an intermediate project. It doesn't mean that you can't do it if you're a beginner. You can always slow down the frame rate on this video so you can really see what I'm doing. Um, but I'm not teaching at a slow enough pace to teach you how to crochet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need two more. I think I need two more. Let me double count that one more time. Um, if you are just learning how to crochet, um, be comfortable counting. You're going to have to spend a lot of time counting your work. Okay, I've got 12 stitches. I'm going to pull a loop there so that my work doesn't come out. And then I'm going to come back to that magic ring that we started with. I'm going to hold the base of these very first stitches that we made. I'm not pinching it so hard that nothing can move. I'm just holding it so it's steady. I've got my tail and I'm going to pull my tail and I can see one of those strands is getting shorter. You see that? And it's that one up here. So that strand, I'm going to pull from the same side where my tail is. I'm only pulling from that side and it's making the other strand go away. See that? I'm going to pull that through until it's nice and tight. Then I can go back to my tail and pulling my tail makes that loop disappear. And now there's no hole in the middle of my work. I'm going to put my hook back into my live loop, get my tail out of the way. And now I can join so it actually forms a circle and not this little Pac-Man. And to join, I'm going to go back to the top of that chain that I started with. but it can be a little hard to distinguish. So I like to count back from where I am. So that's, this is the top of the first stitch. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna go into the heart of that chain and do a slip stitch to join, nice and round. Isn't that cute? And then you're gonna do a second round. You're going to start with a chain of two. So you start with a chain of three when you begin round one in that magic ring because when you close up that magic ring, it sort of eats the bottom of that beginning chain. But we don't need a chain three for the successive rows. We just need a chain two. So we have chain two. Now we're going to do a double crochet in the same space. And if you look down here, see this space right here? That's where we joined. With that slip stitch and that's where our chain comes from so that's where we're going to do this first double crochet it's going to go right here that's our double crochet then we're going to move on to the next stitch which is right here let me grab my needle here and show you so it 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 looks a little different than its neighbor because it's sort of split but these two strands right here See those two strands? That's the top of this next stitch. So that's where we're going to go. You can wiggle your way up from underneath. See that? Sometimes it helps to just find the path of your hook before you're ready to make your stitch. So now I'm ready to make my stitch. I do my double crochet. I'm going to do two double crochets in this stitch. And that is the pattern for this round. We are going to do two double crochets in every stitch around so that when we're finished, we have 24 stitches. So work your way around two double crochets into every stitch around. You can pause the video while you work on that. When you're ready to finish up round two, hit play again and join me back here. 
here I am at the end of round two. Now, again, this kind of looks like Pac-Man. Don't let that fool you and make you think that you need to work into here. Count your stitches. So I can count backwards or I can count from where I started. That's my chain and my first double crochet. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that's all the stitches I need here. Don't be like, oh, but I need to add more stitches there. You, you don't. We're gonna do a slip stitch here. We're gonna go back to that first chain. We're gonna do a slip stitch. It's gonna close it right up. See that? Nice. Then you're gonna move on to round three. Round three, you start the same way. Chain two, a double crochet in the same spot. The next stitch gets one double crochet. And then that is your repeat all the way around. The next stitch gets two, the next stitch gets one, the next stitch gets two, the next stitch gets one, all the way around. So you have a total of 36 stitches at the end of round three. So the key here is that you started with 12 stitches, you're gonna add 12 stitches in each round. Um, you're gonna continue through round three, four, and five. When you get to the end of round five, you should have 60 stitches and you'll have a nice little circle like this. So you can weave in your ends and then you can make two more where you hold two strands together. So these are the same, same pattern, same circle. This one is with a single strand. This one is with two strands. So you're gonna need to make two of each because you have two earmuffs. You ready for the fun part? Okay. We are going to make a spiral with crochet. This is, it's so fun. I love this pattern so much. Okay, we're gonna start with the same magic ring. You're gonna reach under, bring up your loop, chain one, then you can drop the rings, the loops off your finger, chain two, And then we're gonna do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and then a double crochet. And then we're gonna make this loop a little bit big and we're gonna put a stitch marker in it because we are now done with this color. We're gonna move on to color number two, whatever color you want that to be. I'm gonna go for this mustardy yellow color. I'm just gonna fold a loop, I'm gonna pick up my piece, I'm gonna reach into that ring, grab that loop, bring it up, chain one. I'm gonna hold both the tail and the working yarn for that chain one because it sort of locks it in place and makes the rest of this easier. Chain two, then I'm gonna do a single crochet a half double crochet and a double crochet. Pull up that loop, put a stitch marker in it, lock it closed. I'm gonna slide them over so they're a little bit closer to the first ones. Then I'm gonna go for my next color. This time I'm gonna do that hot pink. I'm gonna reach under Grab that yarn, bring it up, chain one with both the tail and the working yarn, drop that tail. We're not working over the tail, we're, we're just dropping it. Chain one more, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. Then I'm gonna put a stitch marker in this one and then we're gonna do the same thing with the fourth color. And you're gonna do the same thing with the fourth color too. And then you'll join me back here and we'll finish up this first round. All right, you've got all four colors on there and it looks like a hot mess, but it's not going to in a minute. So we're gonna go back to where our original tail is connected and you can still see two strands of our magic ring. So I'm gonna hold on to those and I'm just gonna sort of pull our stitches, sort of cinch our, cinch our stitches up against each other so we can see more of that magic ring, which should look pretty familiar at this point since you've made four rounds. 
I'm going to pull on the tail till one of these strands starts to get shorter. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one it is that's getting shorter and you got to do it. Right, there it is. And I'm going to pull on that one only from the side where the tail is until the other one disappears. And then I'm going to pull on that tail nice and tight. Look at that. Teeny tiny little pinwheel. This feels like a lot when you're first doing it because you've only got a couple little stitches and then you've got all these stitch markers. It gets easier as you go along. All right, we are gonna go back to the color with, that we just finished with, this one. And I'm gonna take a different color stitch marker and have it ready because the next stitch that we make is gonna be the first stitch of round two. So the color that we just finished with, your fourth color, you're going to take your stitch marker out, and you're going to pop your hook back in, and you're going to find your working yarn, and you're going to sort of fiddle with it a little bit to tuck all of your tails and ends and everything behind. And then you're going to look at that first color that you started with, and you're going to identify the top of your double crochet, your half double crochet, and that single crochet that you did. That single crochet that you did there you're going to put two double crochets into it with the color that's on your hook now. So wiggle, wiggle. There's one. The rest of this, this piece, the spirals, is worked. 95% of it is in double crochets until we get to the very end. Then that half double gets two double crochets. And then the double gets two double crochets. And then we don't have any other stitches we can work into, so we're done with this color. We put our regular stitch marker back into it. And then I like to count backwards and make sure that I did six double crochets. I did one, two, three, four, five, six, and before that are one, two, three stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This one gets a different color stitch marker because this is the beginning of the round. When we come back around to this, we're gonna have to change our stitch pattern, how many stitches we're placing in each, in each stitch. So let me go back here. We've finished with this minty color. We're gonna move on to this sort of peachy lipsticky color. I'm gonna take the stitch marker out. I'm gonna pull my working yarn to sort of cinch up that stitch so that it's on my hook. And again, this gets easier as this piece gets bigger because the stitch markers get further and further apart. And now I'm gonna look at my mustardy yellow and find the double, the half double, the single. And I'm gonna put two double crochets into each one. That's two. That's two for a total of four. That's two for a total of six. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in there. And now I'm moving on to my mustardy color. So now I've got my mustardy yellow color on the hook. I'm going to go over here to my hot pink, find that double, the half double, the single, and two double crochets in each of those for a total of six. There's two more for four, and two more six. Pop my stitch marker back in there. Stitch markers are super helpful in this project particularly because particularly because as you go this wants to twist and you've got tails and you've got four strands of working yarn and one random tug and you've undone a lot of work. So use the stitch markers. You will thank me. All right I'm ready to move on to our hot pink. And oh, hey, look, 
We have a nice long run of stitches now, but there's a stitch marker in the middle of it. We're going to keep going with what we've been doing. So from this stitch marker backwards, we're going to find our double, our half double, and our single. And we're going to put two double crochets in each of them for a total of six, just as we've done with the other three colors. Okay, but now we are at the different color marker. That's the beginning of the next round. So now we are ready to begin round three. Round three, just like with our solid round and our, and our two color round is two double crochets in one stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochets in one stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. So that's our pattern from here. I'm going to stay with the pink. I'm going to do one double crochet and I'm going to put this beginning of round marker in it so that when I come back around, I'll know that that's where round four starts. I've got to put another double crochet in this same stitch and then the next stitch gets just one. The next stitch gets two. Oop. There's two. The next stitch gets one. The next stitch gets two. The next stitch gets one. And that's it. I don't have any more minty stitches that I can work into. So my stitch marker comes back in like that. Now I'm ready to move on to the mint, and it's two, one, two, one, two, one, until I get to where I don't have any more stitches. So you're going to do this all the way around in round three, two, one, two, one, until you get back to that beginning of round stitch marker. You can pause here to do that work, and then join me back at the end of the round. So here I am at the end of round three. You can see your spirals really, really going now. So you're going to keep going this way. Your pattern indicates the repeat, but it'll feel familiar because it's, it's the same as what you did in the regular rounds. The next round is two and one stitch. One, one, two, one, one. You'll keep going that way until you have done all the way through round five. It's so exciting. All right, so what do I do at the end of round five? How do I finish this off so that we don't have these like jagged edges? Super simple, let me show you. You can start with any one of the colors and you're gonna do one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Then you're gonna do a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. If your yarn cooperates, then you're gonna do a single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then a slip stitch. And then fasten off and pull your yarn through. See how that rounds that off nicely? And then you just do that for every color all the way around. So you do it four times. I'll walk you through one more time. You do a double crochet, and then another double crochet. Then you'll do a half double, and a half double, then a single, and a single, and a slip stitch and then cut your yarn and fasten off. Give that a little cinch and it, it really rounds everything off. So do that on all four and then make another one of these. And then come back and I'll show you how to put it all together. So we finished our spiral, right? All the way around, you sort of got shrunk in your stitches so that it goes in the little spiral and there's no jogs, no cutouts. Um, 
then you're going to want to weave in your ends. Um, because this is going to be sandwiched with another round, I go back to these center strands and I sort of hold them flat until I see where they line up with the edge. And I just cut it there. And then, big secret, I don't weave those in. Save yourself the time. Because they're going to be sandwiched between this and another piece. They're not going to come apart. And even if they do, at that point, you're probably going to want new earmuffs. So I leave those there, and then I'm going to weave these in. So tapestry needle, thread it through. I thread it into the next stitch because it helps to sort of pull that slip stitch down even further. And then I flip it over, and I catch my way through the feet of a couple of stitches, pull through, then I go up into the body of a stitch a little bit, down through the body of a stitch a little bit, and then through a couple more feet. So that there's about an inch of yarn worked back into your piece. And then cut your yarn. So do that, weave in all your ends, Weave in all your ends on your rounds, and then join me back here for episode two. I'm gonna show you the other pattern that you can use, and then we're gonna put it all together and finish up our fantastic earmuffs. If you haven't yet, you wanna to head to onebighappy.com or to the description below and click that link so that you can pick up a kit. So you can join me back here for episode two, to book two of our earmuffs. Put the whole thing together. Happy crocheting!